Dragonfire 2 on the Minecraft Marketplace is finally here. And we have set ourselves the challenge to spend 100 days in this magical dragon world. We have so much to discover and challenges to complete. First, we must pick which nation we will belong to. Then, we must go and see if we can collect every single dragon egg in the game while defeating the epic bosses along the way. There are 26 dragons in total, and we must defeat the epic Fire Lord boss. So find out if we can do it in the next 100 days here in Dragon Fire Nation. Alright, so it was day one, and let's be honest, that intro was absolutely epic. I was aboard a floating ship, and my adventure was about to begin. I headed outside, onto the deck, and I found this guy, the commander. Ah, you're awake. We're almost at the new frontier. It's about time we got started. When you're ready to begin, use the I'm ready button, and we'll get started, your highness. He just called me your highness. He did call me your highness. I looks as if I'm a bit of a big deal around here. But anyway, I looted up the ship, got some stuff, and then talked to the airship deck crew. Have you decided what nation you are going to begin with yet, your highness? Okay, she called me your highness too. This is pretty epic. Yep, so she basically told me that I had to pick a nation. Now, you guys that watch my videos know that I usually am called the Inferno Nation. So, I had to pick the closest thing. The Fire Nation. These guys are usually bad guys, but come on, I'm gonna make them good guys. Well, no, this is just my nation. Just, okay, it's a little bit confusing, but I'm the Fire Nation leader now. Again, I spoke to the commander. Welcome to your nation, your highness. Your first dragon egg awaits you at the hatchery. Make sure to speak with your citizens. They will offer you information and services to help you make your nation the best it can be. Ooh, sounds good. I'd suggest visiting the hatchery first. While you're waiting for your dragon to hatch, be sure to explore your new nation. The area ahead of you and to your left is prepared with lots of useful information about dragons and the lands you can explore. Enjoy, your highness. I'll watch over the ship. Why, thank you, Commander. The Commander was pretty sweet, and I took his advice. I headed on in to check out my new nation. First thing I noticed was a list of all 26 dragons that I had to collect. Outrageous. There were so many of them. The first one I saw was this Magnus. He was pretty much the mascot of my nation, the Fire Nation. Thankfully, I got a couple of his eggs and was able to get a crystal from this guy. The crystal is used to hatch the dragon eggs. So I got the process started and my Magnus was going to hatch. My very first dragon. I could not wait. Anyway, while that was hatching, I went around my nation and checked out what was going down. These guys were the traders. They were going to trade me any sort of furniture that I needed to kit out my castle. So I headed on inside and it looks as if there was a gift sitting there waiting for me. I got myself an enchanted iron sword among a couple of other things. I then took a look around and realized how big this place was. Not only my castle, but the surrounding areas. I picked a room that was going to be my bedroom upstairs, but I kind of decided that it was too far away, so I wanted to pick downstairs. In the meantime, it started raining and I realized that this place was actually huge and there was so much to discover. But then this guy hatched my first dragon, a little Magnus, and it seemed that he wanted to eat magma blocks. I didn't have any magma blocks, which is a bad thing, but thankfully this dude would trade me some. I used some of the dragon coins to get magma blocks and start feeding up my dragon. He was super happy. So as you can see from this sign, it takes one hour or else 50 magma blocks to get the Magnus to full size. So I had a lot of work on my hands, but it was time for bed on night one. Alright, so it was day two and I could not have been more excited. I ran straight out of my house and got down to the carpentry tool shed area thing. I'm not really sure what it was, but this dude gave me some tools to sort out the furniture. I then spoke to this girl and she was going to sell me some furniture. I got myself a nice new bed and some bookshelves and some other stuff. Mostly, I was going to take the stuff from inside. Anyway, I got over to this uh, forge master, but he was super expensive and I didn't really want to spend any of my coins. I was able to make myself a chest plate and then get back to the dragon food trader to buy some more magma blocks for my little dragon. 
I was absolutely loving how things were going. Anyway, I headed back inside to get ready to start some home improvements. I was going to become an interior designer. So that's what I did. I got some furniture, put it down, and my bedroom was starting to look like a beautiful bedroom. Down to business. I got back outside and realized there were waystones everywhere. I had to learn about all of the lands around this epic dragon world. The Firelands were once a great elven kingdom centuries ago. That was before the Fire Lord and his armies invaded. Since then, they have bent and broken the earth to their will, rendering it a charred and barren wasteland. Ooh, that sounds dangerous. The Fire Nation themselves now continually wrestle for control over their territory against the corrupted wildlife and elements they've called into being. It is a very dangerous land. I recommend being well geared up to take it on. Okay, so they're talking about a Fire Nation, but I'm the Fire Nation. I'm the new Fire Nation. I was going to be the good Fire Nation. So, my ultimate goal was to take down the Fire Lord. I had a lot of work to do. And on day three, we started that work. I was up on my sky base, my sky nation, and I jumped straight off into the water below. Let's be honest, people, that's the best dive you've ever seen. What a landing. Anyway, I got down and basically realized pretty quickly that these areas were not going to be that safe. I mean, this was the lush lands. This was an area that was supposed to be, well, not as dangerous as the others. And I got attacked straight away. It was insane. Mob after mob just wanted to kill me. I couldn't believe it. At one stage, I was down to five hearts. I had to back up and run. But eventually, I just kept on looting and I found my first dragon egg. Ooh, I got myself a folly falcon. But again, I went outside and got attacked. This time by a gigantic golem. This place was insanely, insanely dangerous. I was just not prepared. Anyway, I got in and started looting around the rest of this little village. I eventually made myself some iron tools and night fell then. I was super scared, had to get out of there, so I used my waypoint stone to get home. I checked on my dragon and called it a night for day three. So into day four and basically I started off this day with just getting my inventory sorted out and organizing some stuff. I also went out to the supplies trader and, well, got the supplies. Yeah, that's what I did there. Anyway, I put down my Folly Falcon Dragon Egg and got ready to hatch it using the crystal once more. And then I put down an anvil so I could name my dragons. The first dragon was going to be called Magma because he was a Magnus and he liked Magma blocks. I don't know, I'm not good with coming up with names. Anyway, Magma, my dragon, did in fact turn into an adult the very next day. So I had to get out there and test out his skills. This dude was absolutely epic. I was able to take out those mobs with ease and I was loving how big this dragon was. So we decided we had to start exploring to find dragons. We could get the Ace Dragon, the Terex Dragon, the Tigris and the Silva all in the lush lands. I did actually find a Terex straight away, which was pretty sweet. But then I had to just keep going, keep killing mobs and explore more to find more of the dragons. I did come across some more iron, which was nice. And then in fact, I saw a floating island. This was the nest of an Ace Dragon. So I got up there and got the egg. I headed home just to get organized once more, smelt up my iron and put down my brand new dragon eggs. My collection had started. We had an ace dragon and a terex dragon. Not bad. I also made myself a full set of iron armor. I was looking good. So now that I was looking good and had got a couple of eggs, I had the goo. I wanted to go find more. So that's what I did. I continued to search around the lush lands until I found this place. It was some sort of an underground secret cave and I found some more dragon eggs. I found another ace egg. I already had that, but then I found this, a storm falcon egg. This guy was pretty sweet and I couldn't wait to add it to the collection. Anyway, I explored around a little bit more, not finding much, but I decided then to head back home. With the spare egg, I made a little item frame to, well, show that this is where I was gonna keep my eggs. Epic. All right, so into day 10 and I realized I still haven't found a Silva or a Tigris, so I wanted to go exploring more. I didn't find either of those, but I did find a nightlight. This is one of my favorite dragons. This thing is so beautiful. 
And looking back now, I realize that I did actually stumble across a new biome, and I wasn't really supposed to. But anyway, I did find this place. It was kind of a villager hangout spot in a windmill, and I realized he had a pretty good trade. Power 5. That would be epic for a bow. So I went back home, I got organized, put my dragon egg down, and made sure that my new dragon was okay. The folly falcon had hatched, and I was going to feed him some seeds. Alright, so it was into day 11, and I headed out to go ahead and do some farming. I wanted to get as much wheat as I possibly could so I could make the trade with the trader for that enchanted book. It did take me a lot of time, but while I was doing it, I did explore a little bit more and eventually find the two dragon eggs that I was looking for. The Silva and the Tigris. Absolutely epic. I wasn't expecting to find them, so that was a bit of a bonus. Anyway, I got back home and put the two dragon eggs down. I now had six eggs on display. I was feeling pretty good. I was starting to collect up some diamonds as well, so I was pretty happy with how the first two weeks had gone. So I went to day 15 and I did go ahead back to the traders and get that book that I was looking for. Power 5. This was going to make my bow absolutely epic and it would be super important for getting rid of all those crazy mobs in the future. I did continue to trade with these guys and yeah, I got myself a little knockback book and I eventually made the bow that I was going to enchant with that power 5. I did more trading with the guys outside, got more emeralds and turned those emeralds into arrows to go with my bow. I then raided this place. Um, I can't remember what these mobs are called, some sort of lizard, kimono, dragon type dudes, but I was able to take them all out. And then I decided to head back home. It was a long day. Alright, so on day 16, I woke up ready for action. I was going to enchant my bow with that power 5, but then I realized that it was going to cost me 5 enchantments. And I didn't want to use all my XP without enchanting armor. I mean, you guys are ready for some action and some excitement right now, but I just wasn't ready. I had to get down to this close by farm and see if I could loot some more stuff. Oh yeah, and then this llama spat at me and I had to kill him. I'm sorry. Anyway, I did go ahead and loot this little farm and kill the little piggies so I could get some more XP. I found the diamonds that I needed and I got a little bit more XP that I would be able to go ahead and enchant all of my new diamond armor that I was going to make. So, after I was finished the raiding, I got back to my house, made all the armor, a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. I then had to go to the enchantment room with this guy and enchant absolutely everything. I did run out of lapis, but it was good. I was able to trade with this guy and buy some more. So by the end of the day, I had a new enchanted bow, an enchanted pick, an enchanted sword, and full enchanted diamond armor. It was an epic achieve over a couple of days. I did put away the diamond armor because I didn't want to wear it when I didn't need it. That was a long couple of days and it was time for bed. Okay, so like I said, you guys are ready for some action and so was I. I realized I was hearing things coming from underneath the castle, so I went down to explore. And I was right. Check out this guy. I found a secret dragon hiding under my nation's castle. He must have been left here from the old Fire Nation. His name was Hot Black, and he gave fire resistance when you were riding on his back. This guy was absolutely outrageous. Completely jet black. He was insane. So I built an entrance to his little secret cave and I got this guy out for a test flight. I could not believe my luck. I found an outrageously ultra rare dragon right underneath my castle. It was insane and he was super fast. So in saying that, I was super hyped. Over the next week, we got down to business. We wanted to go exploring and find more dragon eggs. First, we learned about the marshlands. The marshlands is home to the rather unpredictable beast race known as the Froglin. This isle has the largest population of Froglin in the known world. We presume this is because it's the legendary sacred resting place of the mythical dragon, Frogon. Isn't that something? The marshlands are untamed and therefore pretty hard to traverse, so I'd recommend bringing a dragon or an Allstrider with you. You certainly don't want to be stuck fighting the Froglin on their home turf without some kind of advantage. Yeah, so the island expert gave us some advice. His name was Lu Bei, by the way. Super weird. But anyway, he gave us the advice we needed. I went ahead and got the compass for the marshlands because I tried to find it without it and I got lost. Yeah, 
I had to go back and get that. I wasted a bit of time there, but eventually we flew out and did in fact get to the marshlands. I didn't realize how crazy this place was. I went ahead and grabbed the compass here to the Frogland camp because this is where we needed to go to get that beast. That was the Frogon Dragon. Absolutely crazy looking thing. I did go ahead and find myself a silver egg pretty much straight away in this place but realized I didn't need it so I put it back. On my way to that Frogland camp I came across this smaller one. I decided to test out my skills on this new dragon and take out a few of these, well, frog ninjas. It was actually way more difficult than I thought. I had to like eat golden apples and try fight these dudes off. It was super hard, but eventually I won the little battle and took out this ninja. Frog ninja, man, dude. These mobs are insane, people. Like really insane. Anyway, I destroyed this camp and moved on. I was having a serious amount of fun. Oh yeah, and I got a lot of gold back there. But eventually I did find the main camp that I was looking for. This place was pretty hidden, but like I said, I found it. So I got in there and started destroying the place. I took out all of these little frog weirdos and all of their spawners while I was eating golden apples. It was pretty tough. Anyway, I did in fact get the mythical dragon egg, the Frogon egg. So I was super happy with it, but I still had to make my way out of there. Eventually, I did defeat all of the froglin, well, most of them anyway, and I escaped. But then, I caught a glimpse of the Firelands. They were extremely intriguing, but I knew it was going to be dangerous. I decided to head over and take a quick look. I immediately regretted it. It was insane. There was dudes everywhere trying to kill me. Alright, so I did get a little bit carried away going into the Firelands there, but I was now intrigued. I did put down all of the gold that I had just gotten and the brand new Frogon egg, but I just couldn't get the Firelands off my mind. So I got all of my brand new diamond armor and I put it on. I was thinking about going to the Firelands. I don't know if it was a good idea, but I had to talk to Lube to see what I could find out. Firelands were once a great elven kingdom centuries ago. That was before the Fire Lord and his armies invaded. Since then, they have bent and broken the earth to their will, rendering it into a charred and barren. Okay, so I had heard all of this before, and I had already made my mind up. I was actually going to use the Waystone and go to the Firelands. And before I could actually think twice about it, I was there. This place was so freaky. But look at the dragons that you could actually get in this place. They were insane. Uh, some of them were brand new. I had never seen them before. I was super excited. I realized this place was huge because there was lots of compasses pointing me in different directions. But I went straight into the citadel. It was a bit of a mistake. I mean, I got attacked straight away by an old Fire Nation guard. But I was then able to sneak around and steal a lot of loot. I mean, this place was crazy. I found a netherite axe straight away. And a netherite hoe, but I don't need that. But you know what I mean. It, it was exciting. And then, not before long, I did in fact find myself a brand new netherite sword. The absolute jackpot. Well, I thought it was the jackpot. And then I found the actual jackpot. Loads and loads of netherite ingots. It was crazy. But I had to get out of there. Okay, so on day 30, I made a promise to myself not to go back to the Firelands until I was 100% ready. That was going to be the last thing that I'd done. Anyway, I used all of these brand new netherite ingots that I had stolen from the Firelands to make all of my armor and tools the best that they could be. I was now fully equipped with netherite armor that was enchanted. And I also got some upgrades for my bow. Time to learn about a new area. Skylands are a beautiful natural wonder. The humans of the Skylands Light Nation once reigned supreme alongside the elves, but they've been keeping to themselves as of late. They have a monastery of light. The monks there are keepers of the guardian dragon Gladius, a legendary species of dragon, which, fun fact, is the opposite element of the Shadow Nation's guardian dragon. The Skylands Waystone will take you straight to the top of the monastery should you wish to visit. Their kingdom is truly spectacular. Okay, so I got the scoop from Lu Bay and I headed on out. Turns out that this place was pretty friendly and I was going to be able to trade to get that Gladius egg. But first I had to get the Shadow Egg. That was known as the Abyssus. And there was also another legendary egg called the Azurite. I just realized that I had three really rare exclusive dragons that I had to find. 
it was gonna be pretty tough. So I got to exploring. I did find myself a shard egg pretty much straight away in this area, but then I decided to head back to the Skylands castle to talk to more people to try and get more information. Eventually I got up and I started talking to the king here. He basically said that he was going to be one of my allies and that we could work together. I knew that I had to find this gladius dragon. It was now going to be my main goal. So after searching around this castle for a couple of days, I did find a lot of stuff, including a brand new Night Stalker egg. I pretty much thought that I had all the information I needed. Basically, I have to defeat the Fire Lord to go ahead and get the Shadow Egg to trade and get the Gladius Egg. It was all lining up for an epic battle at the end in the Firelands. Oh yeah, and I made some golden apples for him at the bed. Alright, so I did in fact spend the next week back in the Skylands because I wanted to find every dragon there was to find in this area. I still had to get the Blaze Falcon and of course the Storm Stratus. Storm Stratus being one of my favorite dragons in this epic, epic world. Anyway, I just searched around this area. It was huge, but eventually I did find a Storm Stratus inside the castle. This is definitely, like I said, one of my favorite dragons in the game. It is absolutely amazing looking. It's pretty big too. Eventually inside the castle again, I found what I was looking for, the Blaze Falcon Egg. I had found the two dragons that I set out to find. I did spend a few more days here just rummaging around because there was a lot to see. I found some potions and talked to a few people inside this place getting more information about this world. The Gravelands was probably going to be my next area that I was going to stop. Anyway, I said thank you to the king and I set off. I did find a couple of areas around the place of interest. Again, I found another egg, a blaze falcon, again this time, but eventually I decided it was time to head back. Marveling at the two dragons that I had just got. I may hatch one of them. Well, I already know if I did or not, but you guys get it. Anyway, I put down the two eggs super happy, and that was the end of another epic week. But I did have a spare Blaze Falcon, and I had a spare Storm Falcon, so I said, hey, let's get these things hatched. I would then have all three of the Falcon-type dragons hatched in my world. So there they were two brand new babies so I decided to feed them up a little bit and get them ready to join their friend the Folly Falcon. Epic. Alright, so it was time to visit a new area. Time to hear from Lube again. Feylands is the humble new home to the once proud elves. After the war, most refugees left for the other elven kingdoms. A modest population remains here, comprised of those who won't leave the Isles. Still, they remain dedicated in their pursuit of knowledge and dragon lore. Much like the humans of the Skylands, they're super friendly, and will help you out with whatever you need. A great place to start if you're looking to expand your nation and dragon collection. Well, of course, I was looking to expand my dragon collection. That is the name of the game here in the Dragonfire world, and I got word that there was a legendary dragon here, the Azurite. I also saw that there was a bee dragon and the lotus dragon, the nightlight and the night stalker which we had already found. So there was a lot to get to in this place. There was a great hall with a lot of people in here giving me a lot of good information too. I also got some maps to the world tree and the azure temple. Which sounded pretty cool at the time. It turned out to be pretty cool also. Anyway, I talked to the Queen of Fae, she basically told me that she was an ally and we could be good friends, so happy days I could explore their lands. I went out, travelled for a while, using the map, and eventually I did find the temple. This place was absolutely epic. It was mesmerising. I didn't know what to expect, but I just jumped straight in. And then there was these little dudes. I can't really remember what they were called, some sort of killer vine eating plant things, I don't know, but yeah, I got the better of them. Anyway, I did find myself another notch apple and I equipped a little potion of night vision so I could see better. And then it happened. After searching this place for what felt forever, I found it. The legendary dragon egg, the Azurite. This thing was crazy looking. I mean, the egg was huge. So epic, what an amazing find. It was getting so good, I was getting so excited. Every day just brought something more and more epic. 
And then I found this place, the World Tree. There was ants here, gigantic killer trees. They were trying to kill me. The bees were trying to kill me. It was actually getting crazy intense. So I decided to go down inside the tree and that's when I found this place. It was crazy. Dragon eggs everywhere. And of course, the lotus egg. I was finding absolutely everything. Yeah. And then I stumbled into this place, and I've got to be honest, I got lost for about three days down here. I couldn't get out. It was a disaster. But eventually, I did get back out and realized I had caught all the eggs bar one. I was still missing the bee dragon. But where was it? So again, I went back to the same area and started searching. I had to find this bee egg. But I was finding Night Stalker eggs. I mean, I came across this dude. His name was Lonk. I asked him what was up. He said, don't touch my pots. I was like, okay, bro, I won't touch your pots. And then I ended up breaking one of his pots. Okay, I'm sorry, Lonk, dude. All right, whatever. There was also an epic sword in a chest in his area. So I decided to take that. I was thinking I could combine it with the sword I already have. And anyway, that was a whole thing. I found another Storm Stratus egg. I was finding eggs everywhere, but still no bee egg. I was getting super frustrated because I was spending so much time in this one area. I was losing my mind. So I went back. And eventually, in the actual world tree, up high, there was a bee honeycomb nest type thing and I found it. The bee dragon was mine. Oh man, it took two weeks, but I eventually got it. My egg collection was looking absolutely insanely epic. It was so good. Anyway, I had a lot of spares, so I decided why not? I'm going to go ahead and hatch the Storm Stratus. And in the meantime, I went ahead and got the Diamond Sword, turned it into a Netherite Sword, and then combined it with my other sword to create, well, basically a God Sword. The thing was insane. I took a look at all the dragons and realized I was getting close. I had captured so many, but there was still more to get. Anyway, the Storm Stratus liked fish, so I got as much fish as I could. Start feeding him up so he could become big, and before you know it, boom, there he was. A full-size Storm Stratus. Oh yeah, and Kiro, one of the guys in my Discord, she named it. He, I don't know if you're a boy or a girl, but yeah, join my Discord. You get to name dragons. It's awesome. Alright, so I kind of don't know why I'm showing this, but basically I picked up this egg and put it over here because it was special, special egg. And then we heard from Nubei again. The Gravelands was once used by the elves and the humans of the Skylands for its boundless supply of rare ores. The Fire Nation established a foothold here, but were pushed back when the Shadow Nation took over. The two nations are still at war, but have recently met a stalemate. Rumor has it that the Fire Lord has the Shadow Nation's guardian dragon egg held hostage. Anyway, the Gravelands is now a restless bastion for the undead and other creatures of the end. Once again, not an area to be taken lightly. Okay, so not an area to be taken lightly. Look at me, I've got full netherite everything. I can do what I want. It was time to go to the Gravelands. It was absolutely miles away. It took us a long time to fly here, but eventually we did get here. Honestly, when I touched down, it didn't look that scary. Well, then I found the main resting place and all the different types of dragons that you could get here. There were four types. They were all as scary as each other. It was insane, and there were so many different areas. It was going to take me forever to traverse and search every inch of this barren wasteland. But that's what I did. I got in, and the first thing I found was this nest I suppose that's what you'd call it I mean it was more of a grave it was so weird and I did go ahead and actually find the mummy dragon egg anyway I start taking out some of these shadow nation dudes because they were annoying me and I was epic and they were not yeah that was a good sentence anyway there was tombs and all sorts of crazy stuff eventually I did find the vampire egg Dragula and the zombie egg I mean, I'm doing this pretty quickly right now, but it took a long time. I then found this place. It was some sort of an underground mine kind of extravaganza thingy. I got a lot of diamonds. It was fun. I also found this graveyard area with more zombie eggs, but I decided not to take it because all I needed was one for my collection. And then there was this place. It was called the End Labyrinth. 
and it was absolutely jam-packed with crazy mobs. It took a long time to traverse my way through this scary, scary place. But when I did, I got down and I found the end portal, but more importantly, the Rex egg. I had done it. I got all four of the eggs in the Gravelands. Time to get out of this creepy, creepy place. Alright, so we were into the final 20 days of my epic 100 day journey. I started off by making some Eyes of Ender in case I wanted to go to the end, but it turned out I didn't have time. Yeah, uh, again, don't know why I showed you that then. Uh, anyway, I put down all of my dragon eggs, and as you can see, I had 20 out of the 26, and a couple of spares along the way. I made a little kind of an altar, kind of cool situation for all my legendary eggs, and then I went ahead and got the gold that I was going to need to level up a Night Stalker egg. I had a plan for that guy. You'll see in a minute. Anyway, I prepared all my armor by basically um, fixing it and repairing it, and then it was time. I went to the Firelands. What I had a plan. I got there by using the Waystones and teleported with my egg and then hatched a dragon here. Fed him up with the 50 gold ingots and he was now an adult. This was going to make it super easy to get around this crazy world. It wasn't before long and I found my first egg, a flame spitter. But I had to do a lot of work to get it. There was mobs everywhere. It was insane. Again, I upgraded my sword, now making it a hero sword, and went around on the search for more eggs. This place was huge. A vast land of just fire and death. It was crazy. But I persevered. I fought through, killing all of the old Fire Nation goons around the place. But I only had two of the six eggs that you could get here. It was time to go and visit the Elven Ruin. But of course, I got a little bit distracted on the way and decided to go up here and loot the place. But yeah, this was the Citadel. I knew that my final battle was going to end up being there. So I passed on by and went and found the old ruins. Didn't find much in the actual town, but close by there was an abandoned mine shaft. And at the end of the railway tracks, there was a cart with a clang egg. This thing is super cool. It's basically a robotic dragon egg that uh, contains some sort of an iron dragon. It's so cool. Maybe I can do another video hatching every single egg during the week. Guys, let me know in the comments below if you want that to happen. But anyway, check this out. I ended up killing about five or six Seabrus. These things are like bosses, but I was shredding them with my new sword. I got a serious amount of XP. I then collected up magma blocks because I knew I was going to need them later on. And then I came across this place. It was huge. Some sort of a floating temple with zebras inside absolutely everywhere. And all I got was another flame spitter egg. Are you kidding me? I risked my life going into that crazy place and I got an egg that I already had. Ugh. But the search continued. I went on, went around this crazy place and found a mine. I went down. And there was nothing down there. I was literally down there for four days, people. It was it was ridiculous. Anyway, I had three of the eggs, so I kept on going and searching. I found an ace egg, but not any of the ones I wanted. Then I found a mysterious, well, lava volcano thing. I don't know. I ate a notch apple, got some flame and fire resistance, and headed on down. This was definitely something worth going down for. It was the myth egg. An extremely rare egg and I had got it. I mean, all my traveling was paying off. I was getting all of the eggs that I needed to get and I wasn't, well, dying. So uh, yeah, that was a good thing. But there you have it. We had four out of the six. It was so good. I decided to head back home and put them down. We now had 23 eggs. Alright, things are about to get interesting. We were entering into the final 10 days of this epic adventure. I went back to the Firelands and went into the Citadel. The most dangerous and feared place in all of Dragonfire. I got prepared. I talked to a citizen. He basically said I shouldn't have been in here and set the guards on me. But again, I was equipped. I was able to search this place and find some epic things. But not as epic as this. Oh my days, this Cinder Strike egg, so rare. 
I also read a book that that throne room was not the true throne room. I was a little bit confused. It told me that I was gonna have to jump through lava to find the real throne room, but... Yeah, I kind of knew what I was going to do, but I had to get prepared. I made some more potions, put the Cinder Strike egg back, and went back with some potions so I could get fully equipped. I was about to dive into lava. Yep, I knew I had to do it straight in and underneath the castle. This was where I was going to meet my foe. It was the Fire Lord. I had to defeat this loser if I was going to get that Shadow Egg. So I went in. I took him out. I mean, I couldn't believe it. He didn't even land a blow on me. He dropped so much netherite debris and also the shadow egg. I did it. Oh, yeah, I also killed two more that spawned. So I had, yeah, three shadow eggs now. <laughs> Absolutely epic. Oh, yeah, then I went to the nether and I was like nope. I'm not into this. I'm going back home Yeah, so that's what I did but guys check it out. I had now Three legendary eggs the cinder strike the azurite and the shadow dragon egg I then went back to the skylands because I remembered that I could trade one of the shadow eggs for the gladius egg And that's what I did I had it. I actually had all of the legendary eggs in the game. I could not believe it. I was buzzing. We achieved our main goal. Oh man, I could not believe it. So I decided I was going to hatch all of these dragons. I mean, they deserved it. So I spent the next couple of days getting all the materials I needed to feed these dragons up and make them adults. But I was going to do it here, in the Skylands. I thought it was a pretty nice location, so I put down the four dragon eggs. These things were just so epic. I was loving it. I used the crystal on the Cinder Strike, on the Azurite, on the Galaxy, and on the Shadow. All of the Guardian eggs. So there you have it, guys. 100 days in Dragonfire 2 Nations. I had done it. I had achieved all of my goals and I hatched all of the Guardian Dragons plus the Cinder Strike. It was time to feed these guys up and make them fully fledged adult dragons. Oh my goodness. I couldn't get over how good these guys looked. I mean the Gladius. Look at this thing. It was absolutely majestic. I also had my other dragon there, the super rare secret find that we got underneath my castle. The Azurite, this guy was looking insane. And then the Shadow. Gotta admit, this dude was pretty freaky looking. But anyway, we had all of the dragons. I was feeling so good. Guys, that was an insanely epic 100 days. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, smash a little like rating down below. Let me know in the comments what we should call all of these dragons. If you want to play this game for yourself, get to the Minecraft Marketplace. I will leave a link in the description and get this epic game for yourselves. It was created by my good friends, Tiny turtle and little lizard and a team of amazing artists and people so guys get on board get this game and get involved in our crazy dragon fire world hope you did enjoy once more i am gonna leave it there until next time we out peace